بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Hussai Mujaddidi In the first verse of Surah Al-Anbiya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معردون their reckoning has drawn near for humanity, yet they turn away in heedlessness. Many of our scholars, both contemporary as well as those of the past, have warned that we are well into the latter days, as many of the lesser signs have already appeared. We are all aware of the widespread evil, heedlessness, and corruption found throughout the world, and many of us know that the continuous decline of our species into unprecedented levels of depravity and deviance are all indications that if we don't hold firm to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will find ourselves in unimaginable peril. In a hadith reported in the Sahih of Imam al-Tirmidhi, according to Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned that tribulations would befall humanity if the following signs occurred, when any gain is shared out only among the rich with no benefit to the poor, when a trust becomes a means of making a profit, when paying zakat becomes a burden, when a man obeys his wife and disobeys his mother and treats his friend kindly while shunning his father, when voices are raised in the mosques, when the leader of a people is the worst of them, when people treat a man with respect because they fear some evil he may do, when much wine is drunk, when men wear silk, when female singers and musical instruments become popular, and when the last ones of this ummah curse the first ones. As these, along with other lesser signs, continue to appear and increase, humanity will eventually witness the greater signs of the hour among which include the battle between the Dajjal and Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, preceded by other frightful and horrific scenes. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when or how those events will unfold, yet we are repeatedly warned to anticipate them, protect our hearts and homes from succumbing to the mounting evils and temptations, and seek continuous protection in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the impending darkness. One of the many evils of the modern era is the deliberate inversion of good and evil, truth and falsehood, and virtue and vice. Throughout much of the Western world, in nearly every area of human society, from public to private, social to economic, and philosophical to political, there is an obvious erosion of basic human decency, morality, tradition, and universally accepted values, principles, and ethics that span cultures and religions worldwide. Hard at work to destroy the human species one soul at a time are strong demonic forces that promote such vices as sexual deviance and promiscuity, rampant drug and alcohol use, violence and murder, and the proliferation of pornography and other contraband. Due to their relentless efforts to spread corruption, subvert family and religion, and undermine law and order, we see virtues such as chastity, honest work, integrity, and civil obedience quickly disappearing in many parts of the world. For Muslims who are familiar with the countless traditions the Prophet ﷺ left behind about the end of times, the widespread turmoil unfolding in real time all over the world isn't surprising. In fact, not only did our Prophet ﷺ predict these and many other horrifying signs with shockingly accurate descriptions, but tragically, much of what he predicted is readily found in every major city and country today and increasingly throughout the Muslim world. For example, the Prophet ﷺ warned, among the signs of the hour are the reduction of knowledge, the prevalence of ignorance, the prevalence of adultery, and the abundance of women and scarcity of men such that 50 women will be maintained by a single man. In another narration, he وسلم, said, Time will pass rapidly. Knowledge will be withdrawn. Tribulations will prevail. Greed will be cast into hearts. 
and there will be many upheavals. The companions asked, what is upheaval? He وسلم, responded, it is killing. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, also said, the hour will not be established until people mate with each other on the road as if they were donkeys. A companion asked, will it really happen? The Prophet وسلم, replied, yes, it will truly happen. And yet in another hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, my nation will be afflicted by the diseases of the former nations. The companions asked, O Messenger of Allah, what are the diseases of the former nations? And he وسلم, answered, excessive amusement, ingratitude, disunity, competition for worldly gain, hatred, and greed until there is transgression followed by upheaval. The Beloved وسلم, also shared signs specifically related to children and marriage toward the latter days that are undeniably ominous and incredibly worrisome. He وسلم, said, Indeed, among the signs of the hour is that the child will be angry. He وسلم, also said, There will come a time when a man will divorce a woman and she will remain with him while divorced. They are adulterers as long as they stay together. He also said that the children of adultery will increase in numbers. And he said in another narration, how will you be if your youth are immoral, your women are tyrannical, and your ignorance increases? And the companions said, and this will happen, O Messenger of Allah? He replied, and worse than that. These hadith reveal the grave consequences faced by many today who, enslaved by their lusts, not only engage in premarital relationships and illicit sex, but go on to conceive children out of wedlock and either deny them the right to live and abort them or bring them into the world only to abuse and or neglect them. It goes without saying that such men and women are morally bankrupt, irresponsible and selfish, and the innocent children born to them who suffer at their hands are often destined to live in anger and grow into adults full of rage. The implications of untold numbers of angry children roaming about society and the world at large are devastating, to say the least, and increasingly becoming a threat humanity can no longer afford to ignore. Aside from children born out of marriage, who account for 40% of the population in the U.S. alone, many children today are angry because Despite their parents being married and living in the same household, they are still often neglected and ignored. According to the National Children's Alliance, in 2021 alone, it was reported that an estimated 600,000 children were abused and or neglected. And tragically, in substantiated child abuse cases, 77% of children were victimized by a parent. According to the CDC, from 2007 through 2021, suicide rates among young people ages 10 to 24 increased by 62%. From 2014 to 2021, homicide rates rose by 60%. The situation is so grim that in October 2021, healthcare professionals declared a national emergency in child mental health. When parents prioritize the pursuit of material wealth, status, or power, and give little value to the rights and responsibilities of parenting, and deny their children the love and attention they are due, is this unprecedented level of mental health crises among our children any surprise? Furthermore, when young girls and women are incentivized to delay marriage for the sake of their careers, and when the society around them clamors together to applaud their refusal to settle down or sacrifice their own happiness for marriage and a family, then is it any wonder why so many young women are now refusing to marry or even have children? Or even worse, settling for a new motherhood agreement which entails the bare minimum of birthing children and then outsourcing a considerable portion of their mothering duties to nannies and or daycare centers so that they can pursue their own dreams and wishes. 
Interestingly enough, even this impulse for women to leave their young children behind with others to pursue their careers or contribute to a dual income household in order to maintain a certain lifestyle is something that our Prophet ﷺ warned us about as yet another sign of the end of time. He ﷺ said, the hour will not come until both the wife and husband work in the marketplace. The great lesson here is that anyone who intends to marry and have children, especially women who are entrusted by God as their primary caretakers, should think long and hard about what they are and aren't willing to give up in order to ensure that they are present in their children's lives and that they will not just hand them over to strangers to raise or simply neglect them altogether. Sadly, far too many children experience emotional neglect due to parents who may be at home but are too busy or distracted by their phones, social media, television, etc., to really connect or bond with them in a meaningful way. The signs of the end of time are many, and it is undeniable that our species is already in the decline of the latter days. We cannot, however, despair or succumb to panic and paranoia. Rather, we must be people of truth, justice, forbearance, and most of all, God consciousness. In this blessed month of Rabi al-Awwal, we should read and heed the signs that our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us about and make sure we do not carry the traits and qualities of those who are heedless, forgetful, and sinful, spiraling toward ruin. Furthermore, we should take ourselves into account and make sure that our choices and decisions, especially those that involve the rights and lives of others in our care, like innocent children and elderly relatives who deserve love and attention, not abuse or neglect, are based on the principles and values of our beautiful faith and never by political, philosophical, or cultural notions often motivated by vacuous trends and dangerous ideologies. Any Muslim who takes his or her faith seriously understands that submitting to God, even against oneself, must always be our first priority, then emulating the beautiful character and life of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, followed by serving one's family, friends, and community at large. Of all the false gods that humans worship in lieu of God, the ego or self is the worst and most delusional. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us, Have you not seen the one who took his desire as his deity? Or do you think that most of them listen or understand? They are only like cattle, no more than that. They are astray from the right way. Among the many ways of celebrating the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this blessed month of Rabi al-Awwal is studying his seerah, emulating his noble character, obeying his commands, and heeding his warnings. While most of us are consumed by the challenges of life and struggling against our own egos and desires, the Prophet's entire existence is a manifestation of self-sacrifice and love for us. His every action, every hardship, Every effort, every tear shed, and every word uttered, whether it was a glad tiding or a warning, was delivered perfectly and completely due to his care and concern for us. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wanted us to know the inward and outward evils of this abode to protect us from harm. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wanted us to recognize the symptoms of diseases, spiritual and social, to prevent us from succumbing to them. And above all, he wanted to protect us from the greatest evils within ourselves. And that's why he وسلم, gave us the signs of the end of time with such great detail. He wanted to make sure that we're not among those people whose pursuit of the dunya is more important than raising their children, or who abandon their parents' care for their spouse's attention, or who raise their voices in the masjid, or who curse other Muslims with impunity. He وسلم, wanted us to wake up from our ghafla, heedlessness, before it's too late, and to act appropriately and accordingly. Thus, to celebrate him rightfully, 
is to obey him, praise him, find comfort in his glad tidings, and take seriously his warnings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to worship him without any partners, inward or outward, and may we follow the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this month and every month until we depart from this world and are reunited with him in the next. Ameen. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On a personal note, dear brothers and sisters, I invite all of you to join Zaytuna College's 12,000 strong program. This college is an immense blessing for our ummah and we need all the support that we can get. Jazakumullahu khairan. Allah